first Roseville territory at the 46-yard line. Well, you think your running backs and your linemen have to be tough. Your quarterback has to really be tough on the opposite play because he's going to take a lot of licks out there dishing that ball off to the running backs. Once again, out of the wing tee formation, one man to the top of the field, Mr. Rex. Right, as the tackle is made out there by Zach Bishop, number 55. Bishop came through and made the hit. We introduce you to the offense. You've not met the defense for Wake Forest Roseville. Jay, or John Dawson and Jay, Desmond Woods, a captain, Thomas, and also Ken Frederick. And finally in the secondary tonight, number 20 is Zeke Reynolds. As it's second down and 11 out of the shotgun, and the little pitch pass comes to McDade. McDade loses another yard. Well, his twin brother lost a yard on first down. This time is Shelton that takes a one-yard loss. It's third down and 12, as we still got two and a half minutes to go in the opening quarter of a scoreless ball game. I guess you could say that was a twin loss there. Uh, that play never had a chance. It started out with a high snap from Spinner out of the shotgun formation, and then uh, I think Mr. Caldwell was just trying to get rid of the football. Excuse me. Mr. Cork uh, is trying to get rid of the football just not to lose as many yards as he would have if he hadn't passed that football. Tight end Ryan Combs splits out as a split end this time as the through the formation goes Felton McDay out of the shotgun. High snap again to Fork. He kicks it, falls on it wisely, and will take a big loss, a loss of 15 on the play, and now a flag. Is that going to be for piling on? It might be a low oh, ball is. I would, you know, that's, that's a hard call, uh, penalty to call because of the fact the ball was on the ground and that the pitcher player has a right to go after that football. So that's, that's a tough call against the uh, big, big force on that play. You can see Brian Fork wearing the rib protector. He's got the flak jacket on down there. I don't know if you remember the first quarterback in the NFL ever wear one of those. Played for the Houston Oilers back in the middle 1970s. You remember the name Dan Pastorini? Dan Pastorini. Absolutely. Guy had all sorts of broken bones. What do you have? Something like 27 different broken bones during his career. That's right. First quarterback to wear the flak jacket. Well, that uh, personal foul brings up a fourth down. It was a 15-yard penalty marched off against Broughton, but after the, the loss on the play, it still is not enough to get a first down. So here comes the punt, and this is a good driving spiral that's headed toward the far sideline. Takes a Wake Forest bounce and picks up about six yards worth of yardage for the Cougars, and it's down there by Broughton with it. Caps will come out on defense, and the Cougars will try it on offense for the third time. First down and 10 at the 18-yard line of the Cougars. Bill McDay is just an all-around athlete. He punts, he plays defense, he plays offense, and he has, he has to be in, in good physical condition to be able to be on the, on the football field for long periods of time like he has been tonight so far. Looking at the defensive huddle of the Broughton Caps. As the Cougars come back to the line to face a first down and 10. Nothing doing on their first series. They punted on the second series. It was a little bit more successful as they got it down deep into Broughton territory, but then turned it over on downs. And you hear whistles again, and the officials stop play before Thomas Lucas. Look at the size of that guy. That guy's got shoulder pads that belong on a defensive nose guard. And he's your fullback. All that big uh, neck protector popped up there on top of it. Just a mean-looking football player, isn't it? I wonder if they had to borrow those uh, pads from one of the cops. Oh, you played, didn't you? Oh, no. <laughs> I was a little guy. You were a little guy. <laughs> didn't you play defensive back at a Division One level? Yes, I was. I was about 185 pounds. You were not 185 pounds ever. <laughs> First down and five after a five-yard march off on the Broughton defense, and Greg Forrest has only got to go a few yards to get a first down here as they go out of the eye formation. And uh, fake to the first man, and the fullback gets it. It was fake so well, but I thought he didn't give it to him, when in actuality he did give it to Lucas. Lucas picks up maybe a yard, second down still in short. He only needed five yards to pick up the first down. In that wing two formation, the quarterback has to have sleight of hands. He's got to be able to move that football around, hide it and hand it off to keep the defense off balance. He did a great job of that because he had me fooled on that play as well. Second down, we'll call it a long four or a short five, depending on which side of the field you're on tonight. Second down and four, and Bratton jumps early. Up front, hopping across the line early. Who was the guilty party? Looks to me like he was Kevin McFadden, number 54. McFadden gets a good bit of time, even though he's not a starter at the defensive tackle slot. Also, Brooks Watkins will see a lot tonight. 
So already one five-yard penalty on this drive against the Caps, and will this be the second one? It looks like it will as the officials are marching it off against the purple and gold. There's no excuse for, for offensive linemen to jump off offside because of the fact they're watching the football. You don't want to get caught up and listen to the uh, quarterback snap count because so many times they'll change that snap count off and you try to tee off on that count all the time. Aren't you, you there trying to anticipate when the ball is going to be snapped? Absolutely. You're watching that center's hand. As soon as he makes that motion to bring the ball up to the, to the quarterback's hands, you want to be teeing off. First down and ten, the handoff goes to the tailback, and Hartsfield no running room as he is met at the line of scrimmage. A good surge by LeVon Mann, also number 20, Robert Hicks coming up from his safety slot, and right there in the middle, number 30. Joe Cannon with 15 tackles a week ago to lead the team. This guy's not very big for a middle linebacker. He's only 5'9 and 192 pounds. And yet what they try to do in this defensive set, Les Mercer, his defensive coordinator, just wants the linebacker to stay between the tackles, make all the stops between the tackles. That's what he's trying to do. Funnel it all the way to his middle back. If you get some linemen, do what they're supposed to do and knock the titles off some linemen, that middle linebacker should have three long between those tackles to make, to make the tackle. We've got a timeout at the end of the first quarter. Is still no score between the homestanding Broughton Caps and Wake Forest Roseville Cougars. We'll return to Raleigh after this timeout on CTV 10 Sports. You know those punk gangs who walk around our streets? They say that they're bad. But how about those sissy drug dealers trying to kill our children? They think that they're bad. Well, guess what? They're not bad. I'm bad, and I'm bad because I'm educated and I'm drug free. Look kids, if you want to make it in this country, you go get an education, you work hard and you believe in yourself. In order to be bad, you gotta be good. Go to school and stay away from drugs. Why do you think they call it dope? Dope. We welcome you back just in time for the first play of the second quarter as the Cougars have got the football at a second down and nine, and once again, flags fly here. We're not talking about the American flag or the North Carolina State flag. We're talking about those pesky penalty flags, and we've seen several of them in the first, well, just about 12-plus uh, minutes here. Well, in this offense, it's a high-motion offense. We've got a lot of people going a lot of different directions at different times, and so, so often you're going to see the, the motion penalty called out of this wing tee formation. I want to welcome a newcomer to our crew tonight, Frank Pittman, helping us out with spotting and statistics. We appreciate his fine work tonight. Our producer is Cyrus Waters and a gang of dozens on hand here to bring you this production of CTV 10 Sports. Wake Forest Roseville has played a pretty good first quarter against the Broughton Caps. Remember, this uh, Roseville team is only a 3A school against a bigger 4A school in Broughton. Second down now and we'll call it 14 after the flag. Dropping back, good misdirection by Caldwell's got a man open, incomplete and intercepted by Hicks at the 30, to the 20, to the 15 yard line. A flag flies as Hicks gets knocked out of bounds at the eight yard line, the 12th career interception for Hicks and his third of the year. Well, one thing that uh, quarterbacks t often do is they, they look down the field and they forget about that wide receiver running streaking down the sideline. He had a guy wide open streaking down the sideline, but he chose to go into the flats. The ball was in the receiver's hands. It was tipped up and it then intercepted by number 20, Robert Hicks. Hicks is one of those guys that's got a nose for the football. Already three interceptions this year, but this one is going to be coming back and it'll be spotted down at the 39-yard line. No matter, though, for Broughton fans, it is a Broughton football. It's a clip on the run back that is spotted from the spot of the foul. So Brian Fork and company come back out onto the field with the ball already inside Cougar territory. Just been notified that as of next year, Wake Forest Roseville will become a 4A school and will be playing as part of Broughton's conference, the Cap 7. So this is the last year that they can say, you're bigger than we are, you should beat us. <laughs> this is a preview of what's to come. First down and 10. Here's Fork and he hands it off to McDade. He ducks under one tackle and crosses the 35 before being hit down by a host of white-shirted tacklers. That time, McDade uh, got out of the hands of Thomas Lucas. Thomas had him there at the line of scrimmage, but McDade, also a big, strong guy, was able to finagle his way out of that, that uh, tackle and gain just a few extra yards out of that play. He picks up six yards on that carry, so he's got a total of 31 now in the football game on just four carries, so a hefty seven-plus yard per carry average. Coming into the game, this young man, though, averaging just about nine yards per carry. 
So he's not uh, shy about picking up big chunks of yardage as Brown heads off the far sideline and Danny Brown, a quick tailback, a real contrast, to, contrast rather to the big slashing fullbacks that we've seen featured so far. And he picks them up and puts them down pretty quickly as he picks up a gain of about nine on that play. He's got pretty good speed and appears to have some pretty good hands too taking those handoffs. What, what happens when you, you get a big fullback or a big back like Sutton McDay carrying the football a number of times, the defense kind of keys on a slower top uh, punishing rusher, and then all of a sudden you pitch the ball to a scat back, and then you got to speed your defense up a little bit. you got to get out there and, and get on him pretty quick. Shelton McDade, not the only one averaging seven yards a carry. Brown is as well, as he's carried it twice for 14 yards, and we see more of that yellow laundry on the field as a flag is going to be whistled against the Broughton offense. What do you think so far? We've seen just about a quarter uh, quarter and a quarter, if you will, of this game between Broughton and Wake Forest Rose. So what's your impression so far? I think you got two very good football teams, two big football teams, two very physical teams, but they haven't been able to get anything on track on offense because of the penalty situation. They get an offensive play called, they gain some yards, they come back, they have a penalty, push them back, and next thing you know, they're punting the football. And that has been the way it's gone the first quarter. See the penalty whistled against the Broughton Caps again, and it'll bring up first down and 15. We've seen several penalties against both teams here. It's homecoming in Raleigh, North Carolina here at Broughton High School, so we'll have homecoming, or homecoming, excuse me, easy for me to say, homecoming festivities coming your way at the half. First down and 15 is the misdirection, and this one goes straight ahead to McDade, and Shelton picks up the five yards from the penalty, plus maybe one or two, give him 37 yards on the night as the clock continues to roll in the second quarter. Still no score between Broughton and the Cougars of Wake Forest Roseville. See, that's an offensive coordinator's nightmare is to get your play calling, you're setting up the plays, and you're ready to call the next play, and then you get a penalty. It's almost you got to go back to the drawing board again and start over to set those other plays up. Second down and nine, as we've got under 10 minutes to play here in the first half. Split here to the near side, it's Junior McLaurin, as we see three men in the backfield. It's that classic wing tee formation. Motion man down the line, the pitch goes to McDade. McDade, the wing back, is nailed at the 25-yard line and hit with a flag on top of that as he is tripped up. Slashing in to make the tackle was Desmond Woods, big number 44. An offensive penalty called again against the Broughton Cats. I don't know what the penalty was, but the defensive linebackers did a great job. Desmond Woods came up, Thomas Lucas was there, Chris, Chris Russell also came up on the play, and the cornerbacks did an outstanding job of also coming up and supporting the option play. So march this one back after the hold, and it's now second down and 20. Nine and a half minutes to go as we see a substitution is coming onto the football field as number 20. It's Robert Hicks getting an offensive snap. You know, everybody talks about Dion and all these other guys that are playing cornerback and going over and playing some wide receiver. Well, Hicks gets a chance here as he splits out to the bottom of your screen. Full house set, and here comes the motion, and the handoff goes to Brown. He's into the clear at the 30, down to the 20. He can get to the end zone in a hurry, and it's a touchdown. As the Broughton Cats hand it off to Danny Brown, and Brown hurdles it in from 35 yards away and hits pay dirt. It was a misdirection trap play. They think the ball was Sutton McDade on the left side of the ball, on the left side of the line, and had Danny Brown come back around to the right side, kind of what we used to call a crossbuck play. And he had smooth southern from there. He made a couple moves at the line of scrimmage, got into the secondary, and it was all for naught as he went in past Ken Frederick, the free safety for the touchdown. Bud Coley comes on, the backup quarterback will hold for the point after kick. Mark Chesson hit a pair last weekend in a win. As the snap is down, the kick is good. And Broughton has jumped out to the early lead. It's seven to nothing now. We're in the second quarter. We'll take this time out and return to Raleigh after this message on CTV 10 Sports.
I'm Greg Green at Capital City Trophies. We're very excited to be a sponsor of Community Television's coverage of area high school football games for the 1996 season. Each week we will donate a plaque to be presented to the player of the game. So stay tuned to CTV 10 Sports and catch your favorite team in action. Penalties abound, but no matter as the Broughton Caps put it in the end zone. The final 35 yards on the feet of Danny Brown. Three carries for 49 yards and a touchdown for the senior tailback. A basketball player on this football team. As a matter of fact, there are several that play two sports. On this. Here come the purple people eaters of Broughton as they swarm to the football, making the hit in there to make the tackle. Number 31, you see jumping up and down Josh Moore. And also some of the big fellas coming on to make the stop. 63 in your picture was Brian Mears, a 5'10 center. He's a junior on this football team. It was a good drive. It was, had a few penalties in there, but there was nice play calling by the coaching staff to get the ball to Danny Brown and Danny Brown's hands after a fake uh, handoff to Shelton that day, and he ran 35 yards for the score. I guess that's one way that you can get 60 yards with a total offense on a 30-yard drive, right? That's right. Just keep getting penalties and picking up the yards as a big hit is made right up front as the Broughton defense not fooled at all by that play call hurtling through there to make the stop was 54 Kevin McFadden Mike Smith also had a hand in that play he the big tackle in there six feet six feet 280 pound senior also had a hand in on that tackle Couple of big tackles up front, aren't there? You look at the defensive line. Justin P. Smith is 265. Mike Smith is 280 pounds. And those two are digging in and playing defense as McFadden shoots through with the pitch goes out to Hartsfield. And Hartsfield's got some smooth sailing, at least for about, excuse me, six yards as he gets back to the 30 yard line. Nice run by Richico Hartsfield. He's just a sophomore already, the leading ground gainer on this Wake Forest Roseville team with just about 300. 40 yards coming into tonight's game. That's in only three games. So averaging over 100 yards per game and has scored four times in the young season. That was just a simple student body left. Get your guards and tackles out in front of your running back. Let him root the blocks trying to move the football up the field. Third down and short. Third down and two as the Cougars take a look at the defensive set. Caldwell drops back. He'll throw. He's got a man open and it is caught in the flat. Out there with that catch is Chris Russell. He's got a first down and a whole lot more as Chris Russell picks up 10 yards when the team needed but three. The tackle is finally made by Robert Hicks and Ron Williams not too far away. Joe Cannon always seems to be in the neighborhood when the football's there. And it's a first down and 10 for the Cougars as they move the chains. Rotten with a 7-0 lead, but the Cougars doing a nice job of moving the football, at least on this drive. I thought he was going to spread out all the way, but Danny Caldwell opted to stop about, uh, about a four-yard drop back and find uh, Chris Russell in the flat for a first down. That's the first pass that Caldwell has attempted. Actually, second. He had one intercepted that turned into a big play on the last drive. One for two for Caldwell. Not a bad night, but that interception I think you'd like to have back. Although I'm not going to fault him for that because that was a tipped ball that was into the hands of the receivers just couldn't be hung on to. So Caldwell does have an interception here this evening. Well, you can, you can throw the football out there, but you can't run out there and catch it too. And uh, he, he did have the ball out in the receiver's hands, and it was a tip ball that set up the touchdown drive by Raleigh Broad. Sponsors of tonight's football game, three of them, Capital City's Trophy. They represent the CTV player of the game with a trophy, or they will present rather the player of the game with a trophy at the conclusion of tonight's football game. Wachovia Bank is a proud sponsor of CTV Sports as is the Capital Broadcasting Company of Raleigh. A pickup of seven on the play as Hartsfield once again has got the carry. Hartsfield's been a busy carrier so far here tonight as he has carried the ball a total of eight times for 21 yards. Seven on that last play. Under seven minutes to go in the half. Second down and nine. 
the Hartsfield was such a big portion of that offense last week. He also had 86 yards and 14 carries last week uh, in their game. Incomplete pass as it's whistled through the hands of the intended receiver, Benneken. Terrence Benneken, 5'11", 151 pound senior. That might be the lightest guy on the field, you know. <laughs> a lot of times we see high school football players, 135, 140 pounds. You know, some of these guys, some of these games that we have done, partner, you see that these guys, that they, they've got to be, well, they've got to be weighed with their equipment on because some of these guys don't look like they're 140 pounds even with a 20 pound helmet. That's right, they don't look that big sometimes. These guys tonight look like football players. Yeah. <laughs> I got to visit two footballs too. That's right. Third down and nine after the incomplete pass. The clock is stopped, and you see motion up front, jumping across the line. Is Broughton jumping on sides, or were they drawn? The officials will talk about it. A four-man crew here tonight. Five-man crew, excuse me. And it is going to be offsides on the defense. You talked about it in the first quarter. How can a defensive lineman jump offsides? But it does happen. And right now, Broughton really puts the Cougars in a nice position because instead of third down and nine, they'll be faced with a third and four. This puts Watkins is guilty of that play. He was trying to anticipate the count, get across there and get an edge on his offensive lineman that's lined up in front of him, but he got caught for the penalty on the play. Third down and four. A big play for the Cougars as Caldwell drops back, rifles it near side, caught for a first down. Nice catch made out there by Benekin, and it's clear that Benekin is one of the favorite receivers on this team, and with hands like that to latch onto that whistling ball, shows why he's a favorite target. I tell you, if you, you go back and you watch that play again, you watch Benekin watch the football all the way in his hands, and tucks the ball underneath his arm, and then he turns to run up the football field. That's what a receiver is supposed to do. He did that picture perfect. And for Broughton fans, that insult to injury, it was a first down, and the quarterback was roughed after he threw the ball. So that means that the Cougars, on top of the first down that goes to the 43-yard line, will pick up additional yardage, I believe, for the late-hit personal foul on roughing the quarterback. Or are they going to decline? They're going to decline the penalty and take the mark off for 15 yards. It will be greater than was the six-yard completion. So ball goes all the way down inside the 35 to the 33 yard line and that's the deepest penetration of the game there was one other drive I, I should correct myself one other drive where they got to the 31 yard line so just about the best drive that Wake Forest Rose was put on so far this evening sometimes if you're a defensive player or you're a defensive end and you get around that corner and you got a good side on that quarterback and just as you're about to hit him he lets that football go and sometimes you can't stop the momentum and sometimes you just want to go ahead and hit him anyway I think that's uh, sometimes more often the case you just like to make the hit because you're frustrated as the handoff goes to Lucas and Lucas frustrates some people by running through arm tackles he gets across the 30 and is downed at the 28 yard line there making the tackle is Ron Williams Williams and Cannon those linebackers continue to make the stops well, I'll tell you uh, Thomas Lucas is a load he's a huge guy and that seems like the ground shaking when he's out there running the football he's a big guy uh, but he's, he's still he's still running straight up and I think he should just bend over a little bit get those big shoulders going forward and knock some people down out there Wake Forest Roseville continues to be a ground team as each back has carried it six times or more here tonight as the handoff is faked, and now the pitch goes to Hartsfield on second down and five. He needed to get across the 20 to just about the 19-yard line. Or, I'm sorry, down to the 23-yard line to pick up a first down. It'll be about a three-yard pickup here. We'll call it third down and three after that toss sweep. What's the key to running a toss sweep? I mean, many times you think that the linebackers are going to flow with the play, but how do you block on a toss sweep? First thing you want to do is get the, get the linemen on a seal block. You want to get those defensive linemen blocked. First. Then you want to get a guard or a tackle out in front and seal off the linebackers who are in pursuit on the play. And then it's up to the running back to pick and choose a hole or a lane that's open on that play. Third down and three. Daryl Green telling you about how to block that. How do you stop this? As Lucas picks up the first down by just putting his head down. And I think he did what you told him. He got down a little lower that time and nobody was able to tackle him until he got a first down. Yeah, as big as he is, if he, if he leans forward just a little bit, get those shoulders going forward, and use those big legs of his. He's not too many people that's going to bring him down one-on-one -on -one as big as Thomas Lucas is. He's 6 feet 245 pounds. He's a big guy. He's got a wide body. And he needs to use that by running low. Broughton takes their second time out of the half. We'll take this break with them. Four minutes and 42 seconds yet to be played here in the second quarter. Broughton leads by seven, but the Cougars are on the move. We'll have the first down from the 20 when we come back. It is a test, not just of strength, but of the power of the mind. And if you complete the journey, you will be changed forever. The few, the proud, the marines. 
took a timeout to figure out what they're going to do on defense to stop this surge by the Cougars as they've got it to the 19 and the handoff is on the left side. They evidently dropped it over enough to figure out how to stop that play as they try the trap to the left side and that one is stopped easily up front there by Paul Ward, one of the defensive ends. Only a gain of one on that play as the quick hitting handoff brings up a second down and nine. If I'm not mistaken, that's three straight carries by Thomas Lucas. I looked for a little misdirection here this time. Now that they, the defense is kind of keyed on Thomas carrying the football since they are down in uh, four down territory or the red zone as we call it once you get inside the 20-yard line. New tailback into the lineup is number 44. That gentleman's name is Desmond Woods as the pass is thrown and caught down inside the 10-yard line. Nice open field tackle made down there by the Caps, but it'll bring up first through the pickup by the Cougars. Misdirection and pass are almost exactly the same thing used, especially when you got the defense uh, the keying off of Thomas Lucas who had those three carries in a row or four carries in a row. And then the linebackers are sailors coming up trying to make that tackle off the run. And what you do, you run a play action pass, get the linebacker sucked up in there, and you throw right over the top of them to Terrence Vinnikin, uh, who made a great reception. And turn it into an 11-yard gain and a first down where it's first and goal from the six-yard line. Give the handoff to Lucas, and Lucas has got running room. He goes <laughs> left, and nobody tackles that big load as he brings it within a one-point game. Touchdown by Lucas. That's a defensive back's nightmare. You got someone that big breaking through the line of scrimmage, and the linebackers are nowhere around, and you got to come up and make that tackle. You close your eyes and do the best that you can. Something tells me you may have done that once or twice in your career. Oh, yeah, I have. <laughs> Get low and try not to get crushed, That's right? it. That's absolutely it. You try to hit him as hard as you can. You do your best and hope for the best as well. And that's a touchdown, and that means that right now Roseville is within an extra point of tying this football game with 3.39 to go. There's a timeout on the field, and Wake Forest Roseville decides that they would like to talk about it. A beautiful moon over sky here in Raleigh, North Carolina. We'll keep it right here and talk about the final 3.39 because it has been a back-and-forth type of game. Plenty of penalties so far, but as far as the game itself goes, the penalties haven't seemed to me at least to inter interrupt the flow of the game. It has sometimes when you get penalties, it just really slows the game down. It drags the game out a little bit. But th the game is still continuing to keep a certain pace going, although we've had the penalties. And I ha you have to give uh, credit to the referees for doing a good job of keeping the flow of the game and not ruining the continuity of the football game for these high school players. What do you think as far as uh, the offense of Wake Forest Roseville? What was the difference in that last drive? They self-destructed the first couple of times. What's the difference there? They were really in sync that time. Uh, the blocking was good. The, the play calling was, was fantastic. They mixed it up a little bit. They used uh, Thomas Lucas. They used Hartsfield. They, they had some passes mixed in there at the right time. Uh, they did have a couple of penalties to aid them in that touchdown. So it's just a combination of a number of things to help on that drive. You see the Cougars going for the extra point. It is blocked as Russell's extra point is no good. And it continues a bad streak for kicker Chris Russell. Last week, he was 0 for 2 on PATs and had a field goal blocked. And this one could prove to be costly when this game is all settled out. The Caps lead by one. It's 7-6 as we take a timeout in Raleigh. <laughs> I'm 
Greg Green at Capital City Trophies. We're very excited to be a sponsor of community television's coverage of area high school football games for the 1996 season. Each week we will donate a plaque to be presented to the player of the game. So stay tuned to CTV 10 Sports and catch your favorite team in action. You see the score on your screen. It's Broughton 7 and the Cougars 6. Both scores have been here in the second quarter, and both scores have been on the ground. The only difference in this second quarter is a missed extra point by Chris Russell of the Wake Forest Rollsville Cougars. Kickoff by Russell is headed toward the 20-yard line, and on a bounce, it is picked up on the fly, and here comes Rico Miles to the 30, and finally gang tackled at the 34-yard line. A nice return of 19 yards on the play by Miles. One thing I like about kick returners is them finding an open open space and just going for it. Instead of uh, dancing around back there, going east west, you want to go north south, not north south. You want to gain control of the football first, catch the football first, pick your lane and just go for it, and let the block and take care of itself. Did you ever do any kick returning? Yes, I did. Did you? Yes. Fun well, return and kickoff return. Is that something that coaches can teach, or is that just sort of an innate skill? It's kind of an innate skill. You can't teach some of the, the uh, finer points of it, but I think it's an innate skill. First down and ten for the Caps as they go out of that wing tee formation. Here comes Brown, right across the 40. He was the touchdown man earlier in the game, and he's across midfield. But I believe I saw a flag fly. There's that pesky flag down at the 41-yard line. So this 17-yard run will be negated by a hold against the Broughton offensive line. Again, you want to get those, those tackles out there on the steel blocks and get, get one of the, your lead blockers out there to steal off the linebackers who were in pursuit. That time, I think he kind of got his hands caught up in the jerseys a little bit and just holding just, just a tad on that play. Holding is whistled from the spot of the foul, I should say, is marked off from the spot of the foul. And so that means that a 17-yard pickup it would have brought a first down and would have put Broughton across the midfield stripe with three and a half minutes to go. Instead, we'll bring up first down and 15, maybe first, we'll call it first and 16 from the 30. Coaches are smart, and if something works once, it's bound to work again. I'll look for that play to come back again. We'll see. Spilling out here to the bottom of the screen is Junior McLaurin. He's off your screen. He's that far to the wide side of the field. And out of the wing is one of the McDades. This handoff goes to Shelton McDade, and the fumble on the play is picked up and returned by Wake Forest Roseville. Desmond Woods has got the football, and he's going to get into the end zone for a score. The football came loose as Shelton McDade dropped it at about the 35-yard line, and Desmond Woods picks it up and returns it to final 39 yards for the go-ahead score. What happens a lot of times, the running backs try to gain that extra yard. And Mr. McDade was trying to get that extra yard and the linebackers came up and took the football. It fell into the hands of Desmond Woods who broke it along the sideline and Desmond's not a small guy himself. He's 5'9", 236 pounds and he was rounding down that sideline, broke a couple tackles to go into the end zone for the second score tonight for Wake Forest. So Wake Forest just like that puts back-to-back -back touchdowns on the scoreboard. They do so in a matter of less than a minute and go from being down 7 nothing to being up 12-7. They've taken a timeout. We'll take this break as well when we return to Raleigh the point after is coming for the Cougars. Will they be up by six or will they be up by seven? Stay with us. Now Wachovia has new banker's hours. Introducing Wachovia On Call. Now talk with a real live banker 24 hours a day. Call us. Bankers are standing by. If a banking question is keeping you awake, you can call us. Introducing Wachovia On Call. Now talk with a real live banker day or night and put your questions to rest. Call 1 800 Wachovia. This Wake Forest Roseville team may not put a lot of offense on the board against you, but they figure out ways to score points. A week ago against uh, the team from East Wake, they came up with only 280 total yards of offense, but did score 15 points. One of them came on a long kickoff return, the other came on a sustained drive, and they go for two, and a two-point conversion is good. The handoff goes to Richie Joe Hartsfield, a three-yard gain, that's two points, and the score now 14-7. Going back to what I was talking about, Darrell, they may not get it the traditional way. 
here we see a fumble return for a touchdown. It doesn't matter whether it's the offense that's putting up and a perfect example of that, the game we had last week between Apex and Leesville Road. If you look at the stats from that game, it is unbelievable how much difference there was in total yardage. Apex had a total, a total of 86 yards in an overtime game. Leesville on the other side had two or 370 yards of offense, and guess who won? Apex, Apex. and they right. scored 27 points. But you got, they had all those turnovers, and the defense scored a number of those points. So the offense actually kind of had a easy night, and they had to do a lot on, the, on offense because the defense has scored so many points. The Cougars will kick it off again. It's something we've seen a couple of times in the last minute of this one. Is it is Chris Russell who comes onto the field to kick the football for the Red, White, and Blue Cougars. Back deep to get it, B.J. Williams and Rico Miles as this one soars past Miles and scoots into the end zone, and it will be a touchback. Automatic rule in North Carolina high school football. Ball into the end zone is an automatic touchback. Do you like that rule? Do you think it's a good rule? Back on the Texas, you've got to go put the knee down on it, and that football, because it's a live football, to play a taxi down the football. So you would prefer to see somebody actually go down there and put their hands on the ball. And do you think they should have a chance to return it or not? I think they should. So if they want to pick it up and run it out, that's a player's discretion. I think so. I think they need to put that back in high school football and give those young kids an opportunity to make some plays out there and keep the game exciting. Well, all of a sudden, this game's gotten exciting for the Cougar fans on the far side as the handoff goes to Brown, and Danny Brown makes one man miss, but then is tripped up. The play was made there by number 55. That is Zach Bishop. Bishop was on the ground, but still reached out a big paw and made the tackle. Pickup of two on the play, and Brown continues to be the leading ground gainer so far for the Broughton Caps in this game. Total of 50 yards now on the ground on just four carries. Five carries, excuse me. Zach Bissom is a very active linebacker. He's playing that outside linebacker spot, and the play was to the opposite side of him. And so what he did, he found a lane and then caught Mr. McDade coming back on the cutback to break the tackle. Second down and nine. As Fork goes with a misdirection, he steps up in the pocket and throws. He's got a man caught by McDade at the 30, 35, 40 to the 45 and steps out of bounds and stops the clock at the 48-yard line. Boy, how was that for a nifty catch and run? It really was just nothing more than a little screen pass, a slip screen. Slip screen. It. Get, get you a fullback, a tailback out in the open out there spots, get him one-on-one -on, -one on the cornerback. He also got a couple of nice blocks out there uh, on offense. Like Chris Safety was out there blocking for him, and the wide receiver Junior McLaurin was out there blocking for him as well. A 26-yard pickup on second down and nine, and the ball is at the 47. First down and 10 for the Caps, and here's a motion man. Handoff goes to Brown, Brown at the 50, and he is tripped up by one of the linebackers at the Roseville 46-yard line. Man making the tackle, Desmond Woods. Middle linebacker and John Dawson also got a hand on him down low. Second down and four. Minute 44 to go here in the first half as Broughton trying to see if they can tie this one up before the second quarter runs out. That was the same misdirection play that Brown scored on early in the play. That's uh, one of their favorite plays and they've used it quite a bit tonight. It's been so successful for them. Man goes in motion through the formation. That's Brown on a sprint out pass and pressure on Fork and down he goes. I count one, two, three red helmets on top of the quarterback, Brian Fork. That time in the, at the side of the 4-4 defense, where you got four down linemen, you got four linebackers, and one of them is actually a monster back. He's really a, a strong safety, but he lines up in a linebacker position, but he also splits out in case they, they put some wide receivers out there. And that time he was on what they call a monster blitz, came from his position in the linebacker position, and uh, half a sack. Bob Keith, Richico Hartsfield, two of the men that were in on that last play. As the clock continues to roll, Broughton chooses not to use a timeout. And there's faced with a third down and 15. We've seen a couple of snaps over the head of Fork in the shotgun, so he hands it off to McDade, and big Felton Shelton McDade, rather, has got a first down as he gets across the 30. Looked like he was going to be tied up after a game of maybe two, and he tries to pop it back to the near side and gets a nice block downfield and turns it into a nice game. Mark Chesson with a key block on the outside from a wideout position. 29 seconds to go. The clock will stop to move the chains, and Broughton maybe now making me look foolish for saying they should have used the timeout a moment ago. Well, I'll tell you what, that was a great run by Sutton McDay. That was just an inspired run. He wasn't about to be brought down by one person, and he was uh, using that strong 
strong legs of his, that strong upper body, uh, forcing his way through the line of scrimmage, breaking it back outside, using that sideline as his friend, trying to get on one on one on the sec in the secondary uh, on that play. It's a great run by Shelton McDade. Shelton McDade picks up 19 on the play, and unofficially, the big fella has already got 54 yards on eight carries. So these guys continue to pick up big chunks of yardage in the offense, and Broughton now takes that time out that we talked about a moment ago. Not being critical, but as, if Danny Bullock had taken the time out before that third down play after the sack, he may have saved as much as 40 seconds in that last transaction. That's correct. But I'm pretty sure he was trying to get thinking, well, we'll go in at halftime, we will just come back out, but then you get a great run like this. You never know what's going to happen on any play. So you should try to use a strategy maybe a little wiser next time. You would expect that the numbers would be against you on a third and 14 anyway. As Fork drops back to pass pressure, it is not felt by Fork, and the pass is incomplete. So no matter, it stops the clock with 25 seconds to go, and a little bit of a rollout that time. There has been pressure on Fork when he just drops straight back, but when he can roll out a little bit, it looks like he's not afraid to tuck it under and run or stand there in the pocket and take a hit. Ryan Combs and Gene McClellan both ran post patterns across the middle of the field, uh, and he, he opted to go to the running back, Danny Brown, who was out on the flats, but the linebacker did such a great job of covering as well as the secondary. He had no one open on that play except for Danny Brown. Second down and 10 as the ball is at the 37-yard line. Man comes in motion as Fork drops back and throwing deep. He's got a man open. It is incomplete. Almost caught by Danny Brown. Got a little bit of the old alligator arms down there. Pulling the arms back in and trying to short arm that catch, but Brown couldn't make it. I think he'd have been out of bounds anyway, even if he had made the over the shoulder or the over the shoulder catch. And a personal foul has just been whistled against the Broughton Caps. Well, that's not the way you want him to have. You, you got a good drive going here. Uh, the 20 seconds left. You can still have, get it maybe field goal range if nothing else for a touchdown. And the personal foul is going to move you back. That's going to hurt you for field goal range now. And more than likely, you don't want to try to put the ball in the air again. Just go ahead and run the clock out and go on 14-7. So Broughton had gotten the ball all the way down to the 36-yard line. The penalty takes it back across the 50, the midfield stripe, and back into their own territory at the 49. Third down and 25 coming ever so close to calling it third down and the national debt, but it has to be over 30 yards. So third and 25, you got to be over, you got to be over 30 yards to go before it's third down in the national debt. <laughs> I'm sure we'll see that at some point during the season. As Brown goes in motion, Fork drops back, pressure from the backside. Keith hits him and the pass is incomplete. Boy, Bob Keith just lowered the boom on third down and 25. Incomplete pass brings up fourth down and long. And Broughton, I would imagine, will punt this one away because where the football is now on their side of the 50, you would think that they've got to kick this football away. And here come the special teamers. As Brian Fork and the specialty men come off for the offense and the kicking team comes on. But Bob Keith is lined up on the outside. He's a defensive end at 4-4 defense. No one even touched him. He had clear selling once the ball was snapped. And his eyes were getting bigger and bigger as he got close to Brian Fork. And Fork had no opportunity to get rid of the football. Well, you talk about Here's a high snap that goes over the head of the punter, but nobody coming for Wake Forest Roseville. McDade will try to turn this into a first down and he's run out of bounds at the 25. There's 10 seconds left to go in the half. Now it's down to 8 seconds, and that is officially what Wake Forest will have to get 25 yards or maybe kick a field goal. They had a field goal last week, so maybe they can get a cheap three at this point. We have seen several high snaps, a couple in the shotgun, this one in punt formation. This one sailed way over the head of Felton McDade. You know, it was a return situation for Rosewood. If they'd been coming for pressure, that would have been a big time loss. It would have been a big play for them. They would have got the ball maybe a little closer, but McDade did a good job of just getting the ball out of there. I thought if he turned and maybe gone to his right side since he was a right footed kicker, but maybe he could have got the ball off a little bit, but he chose to go back to his left and just try to run the ball and run time out. Here comes Roseville trying a long field goal. This is David Mills on. The hold will be at the 31. It's a 41-yard try. The kick is up, and it is hooking and no good. Looked like it might have had enough to crawl across the crossbar. 
but it is hooked to the left and no good with three seconds to go in the half. Broughton will come back out onto the field and run the final play. Was there enough time to run one, uh, one pass play Absolutely. and maybe pick up 10 yards before kicking it? Absolutely. I think you, you run a short pattern out to the sideline. Throw the ball out towards the sideline, you run it out, there's, no, there's nothing there. You throw the ball away and you come back and you try to you try the field goal. Uh, I, th there was also a mishandling on on the, on the field goal by the holder and he, he threw him off stride because he, he made the step and he had to gather himself again and then kick the football. So they may have thrown him off just a little bit on that kick. Broughton comes back out. They've got the ball at the 20-yard line and run the final play of the half. And it's a handoff to McDade. He's to the 30. He's out to the 35 and is tripped up from behind. Nobody actually laid a hand on him. It looks like he just was, got his feet tangled up with a would-be tackler. And he goes down in a heap at the 39-yard line. It's a 19-yard pickup on the final play of the half. We'll be down to the sideline now where Robert Flanagan sets, gets set for this feature. He will visit with one of the coaches in just a moment. It's a 14-7 lead for the Cougars, and the Cougars' defense is really what turned them around in the second quarter. It is. It, it got their offense uh, excited about it because the defense was playing really well. Desmond uh, Desmond uh, Woods. Woods, excuse me, uh, had the fumble recovery for a touchdown. Let's go to Robert Flanagan now as he stands by on the sideline. Robert? Coach Bullock, uh, emotional first half. We talked about the distractions of this week, the services, the young kids being hit by the drunk driver, and of course homecoming. Any thoughts? It's true. I think it's showing now. We've had, we didn't have very good practices, and uh, we've never had this many penalties since I've been here in the 13 years. So uh, we're going to go over, try to settle them down, and um, come out and just play uh, you know, hard-nosed football. Seems the offensive line has had real troubles. Matchup problems or just missed assignments? No, we're we're moving the ball. We're just uh, we're getting a holding penalty, and uh, I mean we had a about a 28-yard gain and a 16-yard gain, and had a fumble and a holding penalty on both. So, uh, if we get rid of that, I think we can move the football. Best of luck, Coach. Thanks. Thank you. All right, Rick, Daryl, send it back up to you guys. Thank you very much. The 13-year veteran Danny Bullock here across the field, a 19-year veteran. On the sidelines, Roman for Wake Forest Roseville, and right now it looks like a couple of KG craftsmen are involved in a real good one as the score is 14 to 7 as we go to the intermission. It is homecoming, and we'll give you an opportunity to take a look at the homecoming festivities here and see the youngsters involved in the homecoming court. Presentation of CTV 10 Sports brought to you by Capital Cities Trophy, by Wachovia Bank, and by Capital Broadcasting Company. Halftime comes your way. Stay with us on CTV. TV. Now Wachovia has new bankers hours. Introducing Wachovia On Call. Now talk with a real live banker 24 hours a day. Call us. Bankers are standing by. If a banking question is keeping you awake, you can call us. Introducing Wachovia On Call. Now talk with a real live banker day or night and put your questions to rest. Call 1-800-WACOVIA. I'm Greg Green at Capital City Trophies. We're very excited to be a sponsor of community television's coverage of area high school football games for the 1996 season. Each week we'll donate a plaque to be presented to the player of the game. So stay tuned to CTV 10 Sports and catch your favorite team in action. <laughs> Welcome back to the second half kickoff as the Cougars boot it deep to the Caps and it will be Broughton football as it comes across the 20 to the 25 as Rico Miles has stood up and comes back to the near side, still on his feet at the 30 to the 35, a flag is on the play at the far sideline and so this one will be coming back I believe, no it's a face mask against the kicking team so we'll add some yardage to the end of this Rico Miles kickoff return of 19 yards to start the second half. 
Welcome back to Broughton High School. Rick Dayton along with my partner Daryl Green and on the sidelines it's Robert Flynn again as we get ready for the second half here and are underway and it's a fine start for the Broughton Caps despite trailing 14 to 7 at the break. Along with all those who are gathered here tonight we want to send along our congratulations and best wishes to the homecoming king and queen for 1996 at Broughton High School. The homecoming king is a football player. His name is Felton McDade. We've seen him a lot in the first half. I'm sure we'll see more of him in the second half. First down and 10 as the handoff goes to his twin brother Shelton to the 40 to the 35. Stiff arm is out. He's to the 30 yard line and the tackle made from behind by Richie Coe Hartsfield and also by Ken Frederick. But what a nifty run that was on first down and a pickup just like that of I believe 17 yards. That's the way you want to start the second half out. Rico Miles started off with a great kickoff return and then you hand the ball off to Sheldon McDade who's an excellent football player and he takes it off about 17 yards after a penalty. First down and 10 from the 27 yard line. I think the Broughton Caps are a little bit angry as they start this drive with a vengeance. Here comes McDade. He has his legs wrapped up and he's dropped at the 20 three-yard line, but still it's another positive gain, a pickup of about four on that play. Once again, the man making the tackle was Richico Hartsfield. Homecoming queen for 1996 is Akita Emptage here at Broughton High School, so Akita Emptage and Felton McDade making the homecoming king and queen for 1996. Second down and eight after a two-yard pickup by McDade. McDade is Already got 21 yards here in the second half on a pair of carries. Second down and long. The handoff goes to Brown. Brown trying the far side. The wide side of the field. He just keeps running. He gets the daylight and is nailed out of bounds. And a flag for a late hit or maybe hitting out of bounds is thrown against Ken Frederick. But it seems that every time Broughton runs that play to the far side of the field, Brown has got all kinds of running room. He picked up another, I believe, about 14 yards on that play. And there will be penalty yardage tacked on to the end of this one for the hit out of bounds. Well, they're running behind the tackles and, and guards of Chip Stokes and Mark Rhodes on that right-hand side over there. And Rico's just following, the, excuse me, Danny Brown's just following the blocks of Shelton McDade. And now Felton's also in the ball game, And he's also out there leading on the block on the power sweep out of that wing T formation. So the first down and goal situation for the Caps. Let's put the ball at the seven yard line where the Caps will put it in play. First down and goal to go. Quarterback is Brian Fork. <clears throat> Excuse me, as he's got two men in the backfield, gives it off to McDade, and McDade rumbles the pay dirt. Steps through a little hole behind the block of Gilliam Rhodes and Stokes, and high steps it into the end zone to bring the Caps back within one. It took them less than a minute and a half in the third quarter to drive the football field. It was all set up by a good return and by a couple of penalties. Well, you start off with special teams being a big part of your, of your uh, play, and uh, Rico Miles is giving a great return, and then you run two, two plays added by a penalty uh, by Broaden to get the touchdown by Shelton McDade. It's just a great offensive drive, and that was a statement made to Wake Forest Roseville that, guys, we're back in here to play football. This is our home Coming. And when I was in high school, I used to think you can lose any game but homecoming. You do not want to lose homecoming, homecoming and go back to school on Monday. The last thing you do is lose the homecoming That's game. That's right. Well, Broughton burns a timeout here on the extra point, and so they've already taken one of their allotted three here in the second half. They'll talk about this one and decide, and I believe it may be a situation deciding whether to go ahead and go ahead for the tie or whether you try and go to go ahead at this point. I would imagine that what you try to do is to go ahead and put the points on the board because, as you see, a 14-13 lead with the visitors on top. Last thing you want to do is spoil a chance like this and possibly end up losing the game because you didn't go for an extra point. Right. I think the other thing, too, is that they had 10 men on the field, and uh, with that extra blocker not being out there, they had a chance to block in this extra point. A couple of miscues on special teams so far here this evening as the snap is back and the kick is good. We're tied at 14. The Caps it only takes them four plays to put the ball in the end zone and tie the score at 14. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll see if the Cougars can answer. The score now, Broughton 14, Lake Forest Roseville 14, coming your way from Raleigh. From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, we fight our country's battles in the air, on land, and sea. On November 10th, the United States
United States Marine Corps celebrates its 220th birthday. Its proud and distinguished history will be remembered for that elite corps of men and women who have earned the title Marine. Happy birthday, Marines. As you see our screen turn from black to colors, we tell you about a nice drive and a touchdown, a seven yarder by Shelton McDade. McDade had his fourth touchdown of the year as he plunged it into the end zone. And once again, good blocking up front. Mark Rhodes and also Chip Stokes and Matt Gilliam on that right side. That's where much of the yardage was picked up on that drive as this is a long kickoff taken out of the air by Hartsfield. He's to the 10 to the 20 and he breaks the tackle and is still on his feet until he gets to the 23. And then as rudely interrupted is his progress. You don't want to arm tackle out there. You want to go ahead and put that classic out on somebody out there. Because guys these days, and as big as these young men are out there tonight, an arm tackle is not going to bring any, anyone down out there. Except maybe I'll separate your shoulder. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> First down and 10 for the Cougars. They'll start this drive at the 23-yard line. As the last drive by the Caps, four plays, and it covered 49 yards in a hurry. A minute and 26 seconds was all it took for the Caps to tie this ball game. First down and 10 for the Cougars. As a handoff goes to the big fullback, that is Lucas, and Lucas submarines his way ahead for a couple of yards. We go to the sideline where our Robert Flanagan is standing by. We go to him now. Robert? You know, Rick, you heard me talk to Coach Danny Bullock about the distractions this week. Young Jackson Garrett was a captain of the wrestling team, and he was a senior. And just about a week ago, he died in, a, in an accident out, I believe it was on Crabtree Creek. His body was found close by. The service was held Tuesday, and several of the players had to attend the service, or so they felt, and I can surely understand that. They needed to be there. Thursday was another tragedy when a drunk driver went out of control and hit three young Broughton students standing waiting for the bus. One survived with just some scrapes. Another one was uh, checked into the hospital and released the very next day, but one is still in there, and he is in critical condition. I know that weighs heavy on the minds of these players. It should be interesting to see if this team can keep their emotions in check throughout the game. Back up to you, Rick. Boy, it's such a tragedy. I mean, it was the, not the day, I believe, after Hurricane Fran came through, maybe the Saturday after right. Fran came through, the, right. the wrestler ended up drowning in Crabtree Creek, and uh, I know that has certainly weighed very heavily on the people here at Broughton, and our condolences to family and friends and schoolmates and teachers and faculty here at Broughton to have to deal with such horrible, horrible tragedy. Pass was nearly picked off by Broughton and now pressure on the quarterback and a flag goes down as does young quarterback. Young quarterback Daniel Caldwell is only a sophomore and he's very quickly learning what it's like to play big time football as he was chased out of the pocket there. A flag on the play for an illegal block below the waist. Chop block variety is what's whistled and I know the defensive lineman if there is anything that they don't like it's that illegal chop block. Right, you've got that five yard line of scrimmage where the clips are legal uh, in that five yards, excuse me, three yards on either side of the ball. But I think that time was a little out of that three yard zone. Also, Lewin McMahon, Lewin McMahon, a linebacker position in that 4 3 defense for Broaden actually made a great tackle on David Caldwell. Daniel Caldwell. Fourth down and 17, and right now the Cougars are going to have to punt it away. And we've only played about two and a half minutes of the second half, and you can see that the the uh, emotions are running the way of the Broughton Caps right now. And it may be that they didn't expect to be down at the half. I, I frankly think that they believe they would be in control of this one the whole way by looking at the stats and by looking at how the teams had performed. After all, Broughton was 2-0 and coming into this game. Wake Forest was 1-2. and Here comes the block party. They got a piece of it. The ball will not make it to the 25-yard.